Hi, everybody. This is Lori Cox. I'm here today on another episode of The Pulse, our newest podcast where we talk about pretty much everything to do with medical billing, coding, and and all kinds of good topics. Um, Today, we have a very interesting, possibly a little bit of a touchy subject that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about artificial intelligence or AI. As all of you have, I'm sure, heard, it is coming. Um, So I asked one of my great friends, Ray Marie Jimenez, to join me. Welcome, Ray. Um, Can you please introduce yourself? Because I don't think anybody knows who you are out there and tell everybody what it is that you do here. Thanks for having me, Lori. Uh, At AEPC, I'm the chief product officer. Uh, Prior to coming to AEPC, I've got about 30 years experience in the healthcare field and have seen a lot of transitions we've gone through from technology, uh, payment model changes. So very excited that you asked me to come on and talk about this topic with you. I'm glad that you were able to join me because I know your schedule's busy and both you and I are headed off to Washington here um, pretty soon, actually. So we have a lot on our plate. So thank you for joining me. Um, okay, so let's get, let's just start. Um, first of all, AI is coming. We know it's coming. It's not going away. And I know that concerns a lot of the coders, auditors, billers out there. So give us a little bit of an overall oversight on it. What is the real impact going to be on their jobs? Well, I think that we can look at this as a useful tool. You know, as technology is introduced in various ways in the revenue cycle, you know, AI is not something new. We use it in our personal lives and a lot of things already, you know, using Alexa and, and different things that we utilize. So I, I think of it in the same instance where it will give us functionality mm-hmm. and uh, ability to increase efficiencies, being able to use it as a tool to augment our work and not truly replace our work. I think about this as kind of the scare that we received when electronic health records were being implemented and mandated. A lot of people were thinking, you know, that's going to replace our rules. We're not going to be needed. And if anything, it introduced new compliance risks and reasons for oversight. So I don't see a world where the need for human oversight is completely eliminated. I just think that it broadens our role, allows us to focus on more advanced things that need a human mind that a computer or machine can't do, and just really makes us more efficient. Right. I agree with you. Absolutely. It is kind of funny that you bring up Alexa, because could you imagine being like, Alexa, uh, code this claim for me? (laughs) No, right. That's like mine's going off in the background, actually. (laughs) Good gracious. Um, I agree with you. Um, I I don't see it's not going to take over. It is going to always need that human aspect. And I the way I'm kind of using it is, is like a help tool um, when I I think I use it a lot more to word things efficiently. Um, sometimes I feel like in my emails, I'm not as professional sounding as I want to be. Right. So I kind of type it into AI and um, it rewards it for me. And then I sound nothing like myself. <laughs> But it saves a lot of time. I mean, think about how many times you think about wording something exactly right, and especially in your role where you're having some um, kind of tough conversations sometimes with providers. You know, they don't want to hear when they're doing something wrong. So when you're communicating audit findings, having a polished sound is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I agree. It has really helped me um, increase my vocabulary and my grammar structure. I know that for sure. Um, so we know it's coming. It, it's going to be a tool that we can use as coders, auditors, billers, whatever role that we're in and assist us with our coding, not take it over. What about 10 years from now? I think that AI is going to continual, continually get better and we will see efficiencies. I think where we're at right now and some of the limitations that we're seeing, and, and we need to talk about AI like specific examples because it's a huge, large right. Bucket. Right. So as we're looking at it through um, AI coding, let's say, 
a, a lot of the vendors that are developing software for this are focusing on one service type. Like you'll see them focusing on the radiology or laboratory or urgent care because they're they're picking one line of service to be able to truly train the machine. It takes a lot of data, a lot of clean data in order to appropriately train these machines. So as we get access to cleaner, better data and really use an expert like coders and auditors to help train the model, because that's another aspect of this that I think that people don't realize. One thing is, is the technology available. The other is all the work that has to be due to properly train it. Mm -hmm. That takes people that know the subject. That is a perfect place for a coder or auditor to be and could be a new career for them is an AI trainer. Um, so I think that it will get better over time, but I think that you will see other roles emerge and other aspects gain more importance. For example, medical record documentation, garbage in, garbage out. It's mm -hmm. not going to be able to properly train if the information that's being given is inaccurate. So that's where I see kind of the role, the roles evolving to either that person making sure that CDI is a very real, important thing. I think that we have um, aspects of it now, but it's going to become even more critical to get that document documentation clean on the front end so that the machine can do it correctly um, through the process. And then you're going to have a level of oversight or auditing or monitoring where they're going to validate the information. Also, too, for people that aren't aware of the, the details of the revenue cycle, there's a misconception that coders and auditors are reviewing 100% of the claims that are submitted. And that's just not the case. No. We deal with the very small subset of the whole entire claim population. So we're going to be gaining efficiencies there. Imagine all of the practices where coding is still being done by physicians. That could eliminate their administrative burden of coding for them, allowing coders and auditors to be the uh, the the person that is going to be overseeing a certain percentage of their claims and allowing physicians to have more time to see patients. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big proponent of that because I feel like, well, we've, we've heard so much about physician burnout and coder burnout as well um, because we are. And I think that AI is going to be able to assist with that aspect, right? Because we want the physicians to be physicians. Let's face it, that's what they went to school for, Right. Um, they didn't go to coding school or auditing school. They went to school to treat patients. And I would rather, as a patient myself, that they focus on me, not the computer, right? Right. Well, and two, I think there's another aspect to this as well, is that when you look at technology, um, healthcare is usually the last industry to adopt and embrace electron uh, yes. technology. Uh -huh. uh, you deal with all the aspects of the implementation of these tools, the training of these tools, mm -hmm. production that might be lost from your current staff helping to train these tools. Um, you're going to see, again, needed resources to help really spend the time on the front end to get these AI resources to a point where you're confident in what they're doing. But again, always when you're dealing with money, there's going to need to be a check and balance mm -hmm. with compliance. I agree. I definitely agree with that. And I wanted to go back to what you said earlier about kind of the AI coder. Maybe that's the the new thing that's kind of coming because I was thinking about um, something like bundling edits, for example. You know, you could put in a couple codes just like we can in Codify or, or other software out there. Um, put in a couple codes and it tells us if it's bundled, but it takes a human to figure out if that modifier 59 or whatever modifier is actually warranted. And so I can see AI being able to do that in the future, but somebody has to train AI to do that. It can't just learn it on its own, right? Right. Well, and think about the research time and, and you um, you bring up a, a very good example. The time it takes you to input that information, check it, you know, look for the payer. Is that going to be applicable for them? I mean, there's so many nuances in getting this right. 
when you look at the complexities of, of what we have to just know, to have a tool that can help you quickly research those nuances would be a game changer. Mm -hmm. Or just be able to do it, you know, on its own. And then again, you can validate that or if and again, we have to keep in mind that the only thing constant in healthcare is change, right? So those rules change quarterly or yearly. Um, somebody has to make sure that the system stays updated, so so to speak. Correct. Awesome. Um, okay, well, let's take a quick break to pay the bills real quick. Um, we will be right back with more discussion on AI. How are you safeguarding against errors that put your organization at risk? At AAPC Services, we leverage our deep expertise in over 80 medical specialties. We create tailored solutions that drive accuracy, profitability, and peace of mind for healthcare organizations of every size. And when it comes to the accuracy you depend on, we leave nothing to chance. Your project will undergo our multi-tier quality review process, ensuring you meet your goals and we maintain our enterprise-wide 98% accuracy rate. Learn more at aapc.com business. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Um, we are sitting here talking with Ray Marie about AI and how it's going to potentially affect our um, future. So I think there's a lot of still unknowns out there um, that we can't predict, um, but I I am invested in AI. I'm using it on a daily basis. Um, so what can, what can some of our coders or auditors, what can they do now to kind of prepare themselves for the, this really coming into play? I think education is gonna be crucial. If you haven't played with chat GPT, Again, be aware of all the disclaimers that they have. Anything that you put in there is consumption for anyone, right? Right. So using it in, in various ways just to see how good it works. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, ChatGPT is not a coding solution. And I think that if you're involved in your facility at looking at new tools and technology to just gain efficiencies. I mean, this is something that all practices and health systems do on a regular basis. What are the, the latest and greatest tools that we should be utilizing in order to gain efficiencies in delivering uh, healthcare, you know, the whole healthcare aspect of it, as well as efficiencies on the revenue cycle. So I think being aware of what's available out there um, when you go to conferences, walk around the exhibit hall, see what solutions are being offered. There are individuals out there showing what their technology does, getting demos from different technology vendors. Um, I think that that would be a really good thing just to make themselves more aware. I think if you stick your head in the sand and pretend like it's not going to happen, <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Yeah, we know that that doesn't work for sure. <laughs> like, um, so I, I really feel like there's some coders out there that feel like this is a threat, um, to their jobs. And we've kind of touched on that a little bit. I don't feel like it is. I feel like, um, what you kind of said earlier that, that it's going to evolve and we're going to get to really be more coders than just, um, looking up codes constantly. Is that right. kind of how you feel about it? Uh, yeah, I do. I think it's going to take a take away the easy part and the mundane of what we do and allow us to focus on the more challenging aspects of our job, the more challenging types of coding. Um, you know, I'm going to bring the EHR example back because uh, I think it's it's pretty pertinent. Mm -hmm. The the role of a medical scribe was not initiated until we implemented EHRs. There wasn't a need for that role. So you will see other roles emerge as a result of this. So as we're given tools to be more efficient and take away more of the, gosh, if I code this code one more time, I'm going to lose my mind because it's working. <laughs> to the more complex things. And I mean, if you look at just not just selecting the codes, but the the impact those codes have on things, data analytics, being able to take that data and look for trends, 
that a coder is going to easily see, you know, wow, there's a high instance of this particular condition associated with this condition. Mm -hmm. This might be something that we could develop a program for patient awareness to prevent these conditions from happening. So there's going to be all of this need to analyze data and what we can learn from it, because we're not bogged down day after day just doing the routine coding. Right. Because at the end of the day, even I think some coders and billers, sometimes we lose, we get kind of, like you said, bogged down in our job and we lose the fact that we are helping patient care by doing what we're doing, but making sure that the claims are coded correctly and that, that the patient isn't diagnosed with a condition that's not there or it's ruled out, right? We don't want that to happen either. So I can I can see that really becoming the face of, um, like you said, patient care. And if you also look at just the implementation, there's going to be experts that are needed to help implement this te type of technology. Um, when you look at the training aspect of it, when you look at the budgetary aspect of it, with EHRs, the reason why we have so many facilities that have implemented it, it's because it was a government mandate and it was government funded where they could get incentives to help pay for it. You know, where are the dollars going to come in order to pay for this technology? I'm mm -hmm. sure that that's what a lot of CFOs and others are looking at to see, you know, this could be a great tool, but how are we going to pay for it? How are we going to support the implementation of it? Right. I agree with that. So tell our listeners how AAPC is supporting its members now and in the future with this AI progression. Well, at, a at AEPC, we're doing a lot of testing of AI things, just like you talked about, Lori. A, a lot of the employees here are using um, a version of ChatGPT to see how it could help gain efficiencies. Um, we are also developing a course on what AI means for medical coders. Like how, how do you think it's going to be implemented? Things that they need to be aware of and educated on so that they understand how it can be utilized as a tool. So that, that uh, mini course is in development right now. You're going to see continued se sessions in conference, workshops, HBM articles, as we learned things with looking at different vendors to see where we're seeing efficiencies gained, that's information we're going to be sharing. So anytime there's a big industry movement, whether it be a code set change, like when we went to ICD-10 or the e &M changes or payment model changes like MACRA, um, we're going to try to get the information to members through various segments. Got it. And I'm sure our members are going to be very appreciative of that. And it'll help kind of ease that, um, ease the pain a little bit, I think. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, well, um, any last thoughts um, overall on AI? I think the biggest thing, again, is just being educated and not being fearful. If you're resistant to it, you know, it's not going to serve you well. It's really understanding what it is and looking for efficiencies that you can gain and just remain educated on the topic. I, I completely agree. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for enlightening us on this wonderful topic. Thanks, Lori. Looking forward to see you in Washington. Yep. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of The Pulse, and we'll see you next time. Podcasts are great. Hands-on expert help is much better. Let AAPC services tackle your revenue cycle challenges for more accurate, efficient, and profitable reimbursement. Visit aapc.com backslash business to learn more.